and welcome back mindsetters i hope you had a nice little break and that you didn't disappear too far and stray away from the tv too much i know this north side but you'll get to that later make sure make sure you are ready and paying attention and putting down notes because it's so important you've got exams coming up soon so make sure make sure you're taking this down but on that note, this is where I hand over to Tracy, who's going to continue the show. Tracy, oh, take it away. Thank you, Ty. No problem. That was a fun little run between the screen and there. Yes, but totally. It's okay, interacting with our so internet boring. and stuff on this one. <laughs> I would kill for this TV at home to work on the internet. But anyway, moving on. So, now we're going to run to the type of questions you could get in an exam, for example. So, it says, calculate the molar mass of sodium carbonate. So, we start with the easy one. Let's calculate the molar mass. Let's do it again. Uh, let's do blue of sodium carbonate. So we're looking for molar mass, Na2CO3, and sodium is 23,01. Carbon is 12. Ooh, and the handwriting just decided to do what its own thing. Oxygen is 16, and what that gives us when we add it all together is 106. That's actually not comma one. I'm lying to you. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> shh, shh. It's a secret. Okay. <laughs> 106 grams per mole. Okay. Now they say to you, how many moles in 0.25? 0 0.265 grams of sodium carbonate. Hang on, they've told you half the question already because you already had to work out the molar mass. So this is actually one of those nice questions because we can go straight to, okay, so the mass, 0.265, the molar mass was 106, and this is a tiny number. So it's 0 0.025 moles. It's tiny, 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 okay? But we really are using a tiny, 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 tiny amount of sodium carbonate. All right. I, remember I said to you everything's going to be in whole numbers? That's the number of particles, guys, not number of moles. All right? And then I have one more question, Ty, and then we can get on to the ones the guys have sent in. Okay. okay. No now, last question from me. And it's a similar sort of thing. And the first one is, what is the mass of 0.1 moles of hydrogen gas? Very, very important here, grade 10s. Hydrogen gas is one of our diatomic gases. So the molar mass of hydrogen gas is 2 times 1,01. Please be careful here. I see this all the time with my grade 11s and 12s, okay, that they forget that hydrogen is, your di is one of your diatomic gases, so they forget to make it H2. We have 0 0.1 moles, so we want the mass, so we've got N equals M over M, number of moles, 0 0.1, we want mass, molar mass, 2,02. So we need a tiny amount. 0, 0,20 grams. Next question. How many molecules does this mass of hydrogen gas contain? Okay, now it's that horrible long equation where number of moles equals number of particles, which in this case is molecules, divided by Avogadro's number. Now, in the question, I said we had 0 0,1 moles, number of particles, no shortcuts, I'm afraid, divided by 6,02 times 10 to the 23. Remembering we have our lovely jump over the magic bridge and number of particles. When you times 0 0,1 by 6,02 times 10 to the 23, you get 6,02 times 10 to the 22. Okay, huge number still. This, this is a whole number. This is a whole number, okay? Now it says, how many atoms does this mass of hydrogen contain? This is very similar to what we were doing earlier with the magnesium and the chlorine, okay? H2 has 
two hydrogen atoms. That means your number of hydrogen atoms is twice as many as your number of hydrogen molecules. So it's 2 times 6,02 times 10 to the 22, which means it's 1,204 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Okay, be careful with that one, great 10s. Okay, and I think, Ty, we've probably got just under 10 minutes or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. So hit me with those questions and let's see if I can help these wonderful right. learners. So we have one question, which yes. might be a long one. Okay. Just giving you a little bit of heads up. Okay. But yes, first we will we'll tackle a short one here. Yes. Michael Lissibani wanted to find out why is everything why is everything equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23? Okay, Michael, that's a good question. Okay, and here's where I'm gonna I'm gonna have to give it to you as a little analogy. It's not a thumb suck number. Okay, it is actually done by calculation. And when I was at varsity and I was studying, um, this was one of the practices I actually had to do to prove this number, and it was horrible. But we got there. But if you compare, say, a dozen eggs with a dozen elephants. You have 12 eggs and you have 12 elephants, both 12 because there are a dozen. But the eggs are considerably lighter. Okay, so if you had to put them on scale, the eggs would be very light compared to the elephants. It's the same thing with atoms. Every atom has its own mass, but if I'm looking at one mole of atoms or one mole of anything, it's got to have that value of 6,02 times 10 to the 23, which is an experimentally proven value. But the overall mass will be different depending on its atomic mass. Okay, I hope that helps him. Mm -hmm. All right, next then one. Then we have another one from Alan. Mm -hmm. He says... Iron 3 oxide reacts okay. with carbon monoxide to give iron. Okay, iron 3 oxide reacts with? Carbon monoxide yes. to give iron. Yes. How many moles of iron are formed when two moles of iron 3 oxide react with an excess of carbon monoxide? All right, so first of all, it's not a balanced equation. It doesn't give me everything. So it probably, <laughs> I think this would give us carbon dioxide, I'm assuming. Okay, it's an unusual mm -hmm. reaction. No, no, it's fine. It's not a problem because um, basically what we're going to do, let's just say it gets CO2. We need to balance this equation. Um, and it's not, I'd have to put a 2. That's a 4. I need to put a 2 here. Oh, this is going to be mean. Ooh, boy, we have to balance this first. We can't do this without balancing it. So now I've got four. We've got four, but now the carbons are only two on that side, one on this side. So if I make this a two, that doesn't help me because then I've got five oxygens. That becomes a problem. Let's turn this into a two. Wow, this is a bit mean, actually. So we got four. So I know I'm going to need to change this one. Let's make that four. Okay, so now we have six. Ooh, I actually ca I can't be making carbon dioxide because this is never going to balance. No, this is not going to work for us. So. Probably I don't think you got all the information down th for us. Yeah, um, Alan, I, I'm going to need to know what, what they say it becomes. Sweetie, if you can get onto the page, that would be good. Okay, because I actually can't answer this question. It's actually great that you see these sort of questions because mm. I'm telling you now... As a teacher, I would never give you something this difficult to balance for what you're doing after this. This is stoichiometry. Okay, it's the next thing. And what you're looking at is a mole ratio. So I tell you what, are there any other questions coming in? Mm, not quite okay. as yet, but yeah, not I think we should cool. just do an example for them. Then, Alan, pay attention because you're going to use the same thing. It's the same concept, but you need to get the rest of this equation before we can actually do anything with it, okay? But let's consider... Hydrogen plus nitrogen, which gives us ammonia. Okay, it's the harbor process. To balance it, uh, no, I'm lying to you. That should be, I'll tell you now. We, oh, man. Okay, we put a 2 in front of the NH3 and a 3 in front of the H2. Okay, now what this balanced equation tells me is that three molecules of hydrogen are needed to bond with one molecule of nitrogen 
to give me two molecules of NH3, okay? That's what it's telling me, which means if I had 300 molecules of hydrogen, I would, only, I would need 100 mole at molecules of nitrogen, and I would end up with 200 molecules of ammonia. Guys, this has got nothing to do with the size of the molecules, nothing whatsoever, okay? It's a ratio. It's telling you the ratio in which they need to react in. This is the minimum. Minimum says three, one, and I end up with two, okay? So when it comes to stoichiometry, which we haven't really um, tackled today, but I'll put it in here, is we realize that these bond in a ratio of three to one to two. So say I said to you that we had two moles of hydrogen, okay? So I'm telling you I have two moles of hydrogen, excess nitrogen, so I have more than enough nitrogen, and I want to know how many moles of ammonia I'm going to get at the end, okay? So I have two moles, so the number of moles of hydrogen is two. The issue is I need to now know how many moles of ammonia. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. Every teacher does this differently, grade 10, so your teachers might have set this out slightly differently, okay? Mine have... To I teach mine to, to do this, which is times by the mole ratio, okay? Because now ne we need to know number of moles of NH3, which is taking the two. We need the two to go into the same ratio as the three, oops, sorry, and the two. And what we say, it's a little trick. We say we multiply by what I want divided by what I've got. So I'm going to take the 2, I'm going to times it by what I want, which is 2, divided by what I've got, which is 3. Now I chose great numbers, which gives me 4 over 3, which means this is 1,33 moles. Okay? Mole ratio, that's why the mole ratio is so important. So it was Alan, hey? Mm. Alan, you need to go look back. I need to, we need to know what happened. Who, what did you get? Okay? Because the iron oxide reacting with carbon monoxide is very unusual. Okay? I need to know what the products there would be. But this is the concept. So if you have two moles and you know the mole ratio, then you times by what I want, by what, what I've got. Okay? Anything else coming through? Do they not love me today? Hmm, let me scan. Oh, we have one that... Yay! Oh, thank I think he just posted it now. Brilliant! Uh, I like it. Yes, it's Fe2O3 yes. plus 3CO to give 2Fe plus 3CO2. To give 3CO2. Not Okay, so it was Fe2O3 plus 3CO gives... Um, Fe... Um, two Fe, sorry. Okay, okay let's, <laughs> let's actually <laughs> not do it with the eraser. Okay, Fe two O three plus three CO to give two, two Fe, Fe plus three CO two. Was I just having a bad balancing moment? I think so. So it's um, two Fe, hey? Yeah, two Fe plus three CO two. Really? This board doesn't like me. 3 CO2, hey? Yes. So I really have been that bad of a balancing moment. Mm. I really was. <laughs> I knew it was CO2. Well done. Thank you. You see, we all have them. <laughs> My goodness, that was scary. Okay, so let's go back to your question, which was that you had two moles of Fe2O3. Yes. Yes. Okay, so according to the equation, okay, we have one mole of Fe2O3, which then goes to three moles of CO, which goes to two moles of Fe, which then goes to three moles of CO2. It's actually a lot simpler than it looked. Okay, now the number of moles of Fe2 that you started with, you said was two. Okay, we need to know how much Fe we need. So we're going to go this way and we're going to say, well, it's times by what I want divided by what I've got. What I want is iron, it's got a value of 2. 
what I've got is Fe203, which is a ratio of 1. So it's 2 to 1. 2 times 2 over 1 is 4. 4 moles. That's all it is. We times by 2. Okay. Now, we could, of course, convert this to grams if we wanted to from here. Grade tens, we could make this a lot harder because we could have said how many grams of iron would we get. From what we did earlier, we can take those number of moles, we can change it to grams, we just need to multiply it by the molar mass of iron, which is on my periodic table, 55,8. So it would be 4 times 55,8. I'm not going to try to do that in my head because that would just be stupid. Okay, it's called a calculator, but that's how we could go. We could also start with number of grams. So these are, this is where we're going with this eventually. Mm -hmm. Starting with the number of grams, changing it to number of moles, then multiplying by the ratio. Do we have anything else? I do don't think really? so. And I think we also might be out of time just now. No, I think we've got about a minute and a half, eh? Hmm. Bit about a minute and a half. Okay. Let's do a recap then. Recap. Okay, so we looked at the moles. Guys, I can't even begin to tell you, before you even look at questions like this, one, you've got to learn how to balance again. Make sure you know that. Two, the mole is a concept where we have a number of particles as a group, which happens to be the number 6,02 times 10 to the 23, which we then use as a group, like we use a dozen, okay, because it's easier. The atomic mass, or the mass number on the periodic table, becomes the molar mass in grams per mole when we represent in one mole, which is why the periodic table is so important for us. And remember that number of moles is the mass we're given divided by molar mass. Very important. And we can find the number of moles as well if we know the number of particles divided by 6,02 times 10 to the 23. I think that's all we covered, actually, and yeah. I'm done. All right. Yeah. So, on that note, make sure mindsetters, as I keep saying, spread the word, tell a friend to tell a friend, tell their friends to make sure that they get on the page, chat to us and let us know what they're thinking. If there's any subjects that you don't know about or if you, well, certain areas of the subject that you don't know about, make sure you let us know. But on that note, this is where I say thank you to Liberty and we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>